So I used to love Mike Todd, and honestly, I still do. I still, he really, really helped me get through a lot of relationship stuff that I was dealing with when I was younger. He gave me an explanation of why waiting for marriage is God's way because before I used to know that we had to wait for a marriage as Christians, but I never knew why. And Mike Todd was a, a great example of a pastor that explains it well. He His preachings got me through a lot. And unfortunately, I don't know what the heck is going on. I don't know what happened if the fame got to him, which happens to a lot of celebrity pastors. They start off so strong, so close to God. And then I think the wealth, the materialism, the fame just gets to their ego and they stop doing things God's way, but start doing things their own way. So this is an example of what has been happening to Mike Todd. A staff member just left and all they said was it's because God called them somewhere else. After after six years, you can't even tell me the real reason. But you do subliminal Instagram posts. So should I make this a series like Risa Tisa? Because like, what is going on with Mike Todd, bro? What is going on? <sighs> Y'all, I am a pastor's kid. My parents are pastors here where I live. And something that they've always taught me is we are not supposed to use the altar to... Uh, mm -hmm. like disrespect people to call people out especially people who have left your church mm -hmm. this is why i said in my previous video that we need to pray for our pastors and leaders and this includes mike todd this includes all these mega church pastors that use their platforms and then they start using it incorrectly they have these large platforms and they're not using them correctly to bring glory to god to bring people closer to god and before all of y'all Mike Todd ride or die people come at me in the comments I know that he was using that as an example because I do my research before I post these videos y'all I do it <laughs> but I just want to know the people who are like ride or die Mike Todd fans like how are y'all not seeing these red flags like I don't I don't get it and I'm not trying to bash Mike Todd I think we need to pray for him. Mm -hmm. I think he has a platform and he's just, yes, he's he's talking about God. So I don't think we should ever be a ride or die um, for an institute, like a church or a pastor. I think we the only person we should be a ride or die for is Jesus. If we start to worship pastors more than we worship Jesus, the creator, that's where we get it wrong. That's where a lot of churches get it wrong. I am not a ride or die anything. I love my church. I go to a great church. But I am not a ride or die for that church. I'm a ride or die for Jesus. If there's a pr something that my pastor does that I know is not okay, that I know is not biblical, I am going to have questions about it. I am going to speak on it. And I'm probably not going to do it in a disrespectful way. But I'm definitely going to speak on it and be like, hey, that wasn't okay. That wasn't cool. Um, so I think it's just a red flag to be a ride or die for anything. I have not seen the comments people, um, you know, really defending Mike Todd. I think, unfortunately, everyone is so quick to attack a person being attacked. Like, you want to hop on the, like, the criticism train. I don't know why people do that um, instead of forming our own opinions. I really like Mike Todd, and I... Um, he's very funny. I, I love how he really inter uh, is a great preacher for the youth because he's just so relatable. Um, he understands where I feel like when I was younger, I, he really spoke to me in a, in a good way. Like he really brought me closer to Jesus and I walk with, with God because of a lot, of a lot of things that Mike Todd said. So I really appreciate him and I don't hate him. I don't criticize him. I think that he's just lost and unfortunately he's being a, he's, um, falling to like the temptations of just coming with being a famous pastor um he's not being careful with the things he's saying i don't know i don't know what's going on behind the scenes i'm a little bit concerned for him because especially everything that's coming out about td jakes who was also a great pastor i never heard td jakes um i didn't know much about him but i know a lot of people loved his sermons and really got closer to god because of his sermons but um, I'm just scared because I don't want like TD Jakes is in charge of like a mega church in the same way as Mike Todd and I don't want the same thing to happen to Mike Todd you know even the sexual perversion behind it where like TD Jakes there's a, a theory that he was also in the like the, the ring a sex trafficking ring with P Diddy that he like slept with a bunch of men that he you know sleeps with men on the side i don't want that to happen in mike todd um i don't know no there's been no speculation on that yet but I, sometimes i wonder you know because i'm like it feels so closely linked 
Um, and there's a lot of like weird things that Mike Todd has done. Um, of course, the gospel, you know, yeah, we want to we want to make sure that we make a we do preachings that are relatable. But this is just an example of the things that he's done that this was the probably the first one that got him like canceled and spoken about changing something and you don't see it clearly yet but you <laughs> it might get nasty and do you do you hear and see the responses of the people why did that man allow him to do that to him? I don't know where in their heads were like, oh, this is a good idea. Because it's so disturbing. Uh, there's, this is a... This is another one. That, okay. I will speak about this after. God decided male and female. No, 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 I'm not, this is not a bad, I need y'all to hear my heart on this. This is not a bashing, this is not a, he, if I was there, maybe I would have told him, is there something in the middle you could do, like kind of a, like a little maybe, if somebody, well, I was born like this, I don't know how I feel, that I, I feel you, and I wish that there was an option of other in the kingdom. I did that. I don't freaking know. I know honestly. I wish God would have made it so much simpler, and it was like A, B, C, or D, like frick. God did make it simple. We're the ones that make it confusing. Just to start off with that, but I understand where He's coming from. I had I've had those thoughts too, where I'm like, why did God make it that way? And that comes from uh, asking God a lot of questions. And I like how he says, like, I don't know. Because honestly, there's certain questions that people ask us. Like, why did God really make male or female? Why didn't he make another gender? Because that's the way he wanted it to be. And it's my answer. is probably not the answer people want to hear. But that's how God created. that. Those were the rules he created. And there's not another deeper answer to it. That's just how it is. And there's certain questions in this world that... We as people in general, even if we don't follow God, we will not be able to answer here on earth. We are very, very limited creatures. That's just the truth. So I understand where he's, why he was thinking things like that, but I don't think that he should have shared it in the platform that he has. I've thought about stuff like that, you know, when I'm taking a shower and I share it to my friend, but I'm not going to like preach it to a congregation or preach it even to a young small group because, you know, people don't understand that yet. There's certain things that you think about God that you are not always supposed to share, you know, they're just between you and God. Certain things like certain trials I've had to go through that I kept them between me and God because at the end of the day, like, you're, you have to be careful of who's listening. Some people are very young in their faith and you might just confuse them even more. Um, so I understand why people got mad about that. But I also do understand his thought process because I've had those thoughts too. Let me say this. So this is an explanation of why he spit on someone while he was preaching. I'm, first off, let me say this. I am not a regular preacher. Like when I say a regular preacher, like... I was bored in church. And so when God called me to preach, I was like, all right, I'm going to actually use everything that I have to help people get it. And so I tell stories. I use examples. I did, and honestly, I'm doing everything how Virgil Abloh said for my 17-year-old self. Mm -hmm. Most 17-year-olds, they don't care nothing about church. They're trying to see the girl with the booty and go eat and go play with it. So I'm trying to, like, capture. So I've always used examples and stuff like that. And so That's not true. I don't think every 17-year-old boy, I think there are some that do want to, you know, experience God and they want to hear about God. I know that when I was a 17-year-old girl, 
I was actually trying to like listen. To, uh, I actually want to hear what the pastor was saying about Jesus because I was going through my own thing. So I hate that we generalize 17 year old kids as if they don't know anything, as if all they care to think about is sex parties. And maybe that's a lot of them. But there are a bunch of them, too, who want to know about God, who want to know about how to be better in their lives, how to go to a good school. Like we can't generalize all these 17 year old kids. Like I just it bothers me when people say that because I wasn't like that. And I feel like a lot of times people are like, oh, this generation is we failed we're ruined they're lazy all these things but i hate being generalized because that's not true i've met so many people even you know 16 year olds who are hard working who have good grades who care about their futures who are obedient like we can't we can't we can't put put a group of there's so many people into one box because there is a lot of those people who are hard working and we have to believe that they are you know i just it bars me but yes, he is not a regular preacher. Um, I feel like when I first heard him, he reminded me he reminds me a lot of the pastor I have now. My pastor is very relatable because he's very honest. And Mike Todd was very relatable. He was very honest because of all the things he was going through. And I love that about him. And I don't think he needs all these gimmicks, all these different things that he adds um, into his preachings to to spread the word of God. I think he did so good when he was making the series relationship goals. He did super good and he didn't, he all he needs was Jesus and the truth and that's what God is. You know, God didn't have Jesus didn't have all these gimmicks. He wasn't out here, you know, doing these dis dis demonstrations like physical demonstrations, you know. He didn't do that. Jesus spoke the truth and he spoke it with authority and that's what spread the message up to this day up to us. So I think Mike Todd, because he does a bunch of crazy stuff. Like, he gets to the point where he, I think he had a trampoline once. He was um, also putting syrup in a Bible. There was one where he was talking about gluttony, and he got a whole display of, like, junk food. Like, it was huge. It looked like a grocery store at in the stage. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, it definitely, like, catches your attention, but we don't need that. You can just go on and preach about the Word of God. So, I don't know. Um, I understand him being bored in church, but I think if if you really r r relate to the youth, the youth will hear you. And for those who don't hear you, um, there will be there they they will there will be other ways, and eventually their heart, you know, will come to know God. Everyone's at their own time. Um, you plant the seeds, and that's our responsibility is just to plant the seeds, and God will water it. You know, He'll make it grow. Um, so I think um, how I started where we us um, watching a preacher so, you know, being like a fan of a pastor, I think is dangerous um, or even having celebrity pastors. The only celebrity, the only person that should be preached is Jesus. And the Bible warns us about a lot of things that aren't from him that seem like they're from him. So this is what Jeremiah says, the book of Jeremiah. God says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. And that's a lot of prosperity gospel. It says they fill you with false hopes. A lot of prosperity gospel. And we have to be careful. It bothers me when people just go to church and don't read their Bibles. Read your Bible. Don't just go to church. Don't rely on this man that's a pastor to teach you absolutely everything about Jesus. Because there's some things that like are not in the Bible that sometimes they be preaching. So you have to be very careful. Read the Bible. Everything is in there. Don't be lazy. Don't be a lazy Christian. There's no such thing as that. So don't do it. Um, don't listen to prosperity because gospel. I feel like prosperity gospel is just to make you feel good. If it always makes you feel good, then it's not Jesus. Because Jesus is definitely going to call you out of your comfort zones and tell you the truth about your sin and about um, what you're doing. So, yeah. Um, I don't think my Todd's a prosperity preacher. I think that he never... I, I, I feel like I felt very um, convicted when I would hear him preach back then. I haven't heard his new stuff. Um, but I would hear... I felt very convicted. And he explained things very well. So, I'm not against my Todd, but... He has been doing a lot of weird stuff, and I just pray for him. I think we just got to pray for him as a pastor because, you know, it's it's hard. It's really hard out there um, trying to follow two things, and 
he's become very materialistic lately. I see him with all these fancy rich stuff, and I think that's very dangerous to, you know, Jesus didn't have any of that stuff, and there's a reason why, so... Let's just pray for him. Let's not let's not get on that hate Mike Todd um wagon because it's not gonna help. Wagon. Why am I saying that? I sound like I'm from the 60s. Wagon. Get on the hate wagon. Or the hate train. I think that's how you say it. I don't know y'all. But let me know what you guys think. Um comment, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe.